Hello, today is July 10th, 2023, and I am Justin Hickman. Um, I'm with Vertispan, and uh, today we're planning on continuing our series of um, streams for writing widgets. And uh, previously, uh, we were working on this little handy dandy hue picker. Um, and this is uh, working pretty well. I have the other uh, horizontal and the other uh, vertical working just fine. And uh, it does fire the other uh, change events as you would expect um, going through the other uh, range of zero to uh, 360 and probably should change that to uh, zero, not sure. And uh, the other thing that we um, didn't figure out uh, previously was this little guy of being able to um, flip the other uh, direction um, because right now the uh, the zero is at the other uh, top and 360 is at the bottom might be used to uh, going the other direction but I mean this works and you can see that uh, dragging and dropping work I can uh, click on the uh, the bar and it'll uh, place the uh, the value exactly where you click and right now it does look like it's on the other uh, click. So I'm doing a mouse down right now. And then as soon as I hit the other uh, mouse up, then it changes. I could probably change that because then you would be able to uh, click the other uh, mouse down and uh, start dragging immediately. I mean, there's little tweaks that we can do here and there um, over um, time. But um, I think this is uh, probably good enough to uh, move forward. And uh, today we're actually going to be looking at um, an HSV picker. So we have the hue picker portion and then we'll need the HSV picker. And uh, let's uh, take a look at the elements here so that we can uh, get a gauge of what we're talking about. So this is the other uh, guy that we uh, created last week. And today we're going to uh, start working on this one right here, which is the uh, the larger um, color picker area. And that's going to be driven from a, a, a top level component for the other uh, color picker that would um, synchronize this value with the other uh, value inside of this picker. But uh, got to create the other uh, smaller leaf components first. Uh, before we can actually um, tie them together in a reasonable fashion. So um, first thing that I'm going to do is probably come over here to our demo and I might do this in reverse order so that the important part is at the other top. The thing that we're currently working on this colon colon HSV picker. And let's go ahead and create a uh, HSV picker taking a column and just as we did before we're just going to do a column append child card.add or create and this is going to be HSV picker and this one is really just uh, you know the single picker there's no orientation involved on this one most likely we're just going to always have the other uh, value going from left to right and the saturation going from uh, bottom up. So then in here, we're just going to have a um, HSV picker create, and we'll probably just leave it at that for now. We're probably setting a size. So let's uh, set height to uh, 400 pixels and set width 400 pixels. Obviously, um, we don't have this uh, component yet, so let's uh, go ahead and create that. And we'll just put it in the, uh, the same package as the hue picker. And I'm going to uh, put the hue picker over here on the, uh, the right-hand side because um, there are several things that are going to be um, somewhat um, uniform with uh, what I'm doing here. And uh, we'll probably want to uh, copy some code over. So HSV picker. I don't know if I should. Yeah, probably uppercase. All right. So then this is basically going to be um, the same sort of situation here. So we extend the base 
domino element, HTML div element, and this is going to be an HSV picker. Oops, that was not where I thought my cursor was. All right, let me uh, turn down the, uh, the music a little bit. Seems a little high on my side. Um, I'm not sure if that uh, translates well to uh, YouTube. I haven't really uh, paid attention to those videos yet. Um, implements leaf value editor. And this is going to probably be an editor of HSV. Probably makes the other uh, most sense. And has value of HSV picker, HSV takes value, HSV and has change handlers, HSV picker, HSV. All right, we have a lot of methods to uh, implement here. So let's uh, go ahead and start that. That one's pretty simple. And let's just check out to see what we did here. Uh, here we uh, broke apart the, uh, the user interface into the uh, components that we actually needed. And that's probably going to be the, uh, the same thing that we do um, over here. Um, da, 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 da. Then we have our change handlers. So let's go ahead and implement our change handlers. Protected list of change handler. Super HSV. Apparently I didn't import that class. Um, don't need orientation. And then public HSV picker. And we're also going to have a uh, static method or a builder pattern. Um, static HSV picker create return new HSV picker. That's good enough for now. And we'll add Java doc and everything else as necessary. And we need to init this. And we are going to have some sort of root element. So let's go ahead and private final domino element, HTML div element, root equals div. Don't know what the other styles are going to be yet. All right. And then let's go ahead and come through here and just uh, double check ourselves um, with all of these methods. Um, it's going to be fairly simple. Most of these are builder methods, so they will return this. This one's going to return root.element. All right, get value. Um, I'm just gonna return a value. So in this one, I'm probably just going to use a uh, private field for the other value. This dot value equals value. Let's go ahead and create that field. And see if it has a change handler. It's just, it contains. Move is pretty simple. Almost think that uh, for the most part, some of this should uh, be in a common super class. And uh, not return that, but return this. And value. Same thing as the other uh, set value. Um, which way did I delegate before? Did I go from value to Set value or vice versa? Let me expand this. I don't like it uh, being collapsed like that. So it looks like a set value we just called value. So set value. Value, value. And 
probably value is going to return value value true what is the default no that would be false so by default whenever you call value it will fire the events so let's just go through that yeah false all right And we got to figure out what to actually do with that. But if I'm not silent um, or objects equals, I could probably just do. Am I actually setting the value anywhere? Okay, I am. Yeah, I guess I did it a little bit different last time because I was using a, an HTML um, range input to uh, set the other value. Um, I'm not gonna be doing that here. So if the uh, values are the s same, then we're not going to do anything. So I don't need old value technically. And we will need to make sure that the uh, HSV um, has an equals and uh, hash code methods. And then, nope, we can't do that. I guess we do need the, the old value. And I'll show you why. Because we don't want to set the, uh, the value if it's not silent. Um, we need to set that every single time. So this needs to be old value, new value. This is only to do the other uh, change handlers. And that's gonna be the new value and then return this due to it being a builder. All right. Let's uh, just go through here, double check, a change handler, got that, get value, simple, set values, just calling value, that's implemented, that's implemented, that one's implemented, and that's it. The rest of these are just methods to uh, assist the, uh, the building of everything. So what am I missing over here? I still got a... Uh, Oh wait, that's in the other demo. It's looking at the wrong tab. That was because I didn't import it. All right. So if we were to uh, come back over here to uh, Chrome, refresh it, the other uh, very top card will be the uh, HSV picker. And right now it's setting the, uh, the height and width to 400. And if we were to inspect that, we should be able to see that guy right there. Cool. Probably don't need it that uh, large. Uh, maybe a height of 200. Let's half that. Yeah, for our purposes, um, 200 might be fine. Just so that we can see it. And we'll eventually play around with some of the other methods, like uh, setting a value directly and making sure that it updates it appropriately. Um, and we'll also have um probably a uh, text box in here and value box and this is going to be text box value box equals text box create and this is going to be read only <clears throat> And add change handler and then the change value. It's basically just going to be the value box set value to a stringification of that value. And here we'll have to determine if we'll ever return null. I don't know if I like null values for this. Probably be better to uh, send a uh, a reasonable default for the uh, HSV 
um, value. Never return null, in my opinion. All right. That was the hue picker. I can close that one because that's over here. And uh, yeah, let's uh, go ahead and uh, grab the uh, user interface for this. Um, let me open up my notes and the other screen. And it's going to be a um, very similar design here. So we're going to have the other uh, container. We're going to have some sort of a constraint box because if you remember the other uh, constraint is uh, making sure that the, um, the dragger doesn't go outside of the outermost box um, because the constraint box here is basically constraining it sorry uh, constraining it all the way in here I believe Let me just double check that I don't think we are allowing yeah looks like we're not allowing the uh the dragger to get outside of the other uh, constraint and that's exactly what we were wanting on that um so very similar um design so we have our root let's see how was i doing the styles here probably need to uh, change the names of these so this is going to be hue container. Let me just uh, prefix all of these. I'm not sure if I need to do anything with the uh, the dragger because that's basically going to be the other uh, same. I don't know why I'm still calling it dragger. Um, need to uh, need to uh, consolidate onto like. Um, and the uh, slider background, and that's basically just for the hue. This one might be a commonality between them. Can I rearrange those? I does not want to rearrange. But I had it set up to do alphabetical, but I guess not. And then even here, I'm wondering if is there anything different between the uh, the containers? Uh, let's just open up that um, color picker CSS. Let's just uh, take a look at our hue container. Oh, well, it does have uh, variables that we're not going to need. Um, should I do this right now? Probably not. I should probably uh, separate that commit where we're uh, re factoring the other uh, name of dragger straight offset component height I don't know could probably be the uh, the same <clears throat> same CSS um, maybe I'll just do it like this This is going to be um, HSV container just for now. We'll just uh, share those because we're obviously not going to have this uh, orientation on the uh, the HSV. But for some of this stuff, I'm pretty sure the defaults are probably not great. Uh, maybe we should start out with a. Uh, with its own, and then we can uh, consolidate later, just in case. All right, so component height. So reasonable defaults for this stuff. Um, let's just do 200 by 200. And I am just going to rename that here. Don't need a track because there's no track on this one. That's about it. 
We might have a border on this one just so that we can see it. So it's uh, black, but uh, like 10% um, alpha. And a border radius. Let's go ahead and make this one rounded. Let's uh, take a look at the color picker in Chrome real quick. It doesn't have rounded corners, but um, I think we'll just have to go across uh, some of the other demos in uh, Domino UI Kit just to see what kind of uh, rounded corners and stuff that some of these others um, have. I know that cards don't, um, chips do, buttons do. I mean, that's just nitpicking on um, styles right now whenever we don't even have the uh, the large overall f functionality yet. So let's uh, just come back to that later. All right, so for the, uh, the styles, HSV container is going to basically be the, uh, the same situation here, but HSV. Still trying to figure out if I should uh, keep the thumb or not. Probably. So let's uh, go ahead and change that hue uh, dragger. All of these are going to be just thumb. Let's make sure that that oh, we didn't uh, we didn't uh, run our I need to go into that directory. We need to generate those resources just to make sure that um, all of the CSS is minimized or minified. I don't know what the uh, term is for that minified. That'll require a recompile with the other uh, code server. And then once that's done, then we should be able to empty cache and hard reload. And that would uh, pull in the brand new um, CB, uh, CSS. Oh, we never actually added that uh, style. CSS and this is going to be styles.hsv container and that'll actually give us our border that we were looking for. There we go. There is our border and you can see that it does have the other uh, rounded corners which is going to be nice and uh, we're going to be able to uh, put the other uh, dragger inside of here or the thumb. I need to stop calling it a dragger. Be consistent. Um, and I didn't break anything with these components, so that CSS seems to uh, continue to work. Let me just double check. Yeah, it does have thumb on it, so I didn't break anything, so that was a uh, clean refactor. All right, so what is the other components that we're going to need? We're going to need a uh, constraint box. Let's uh, take a look at the constraint here. Constraint. Doesn't look like... Hmm. Yeah, doesn't look like I need to uh, do anything different with this one. So I'm going to refactor this one to be a common style between the other uh, two components. I don't need those anymore, but I do need to uh, update constraint here. Over 
here, constraint box. And that's going to be a div with a CSS, styles, constraint. All right, and then the uh, dragger is going to go inside of that, just as it was over here. I did have the other uh, slider background in this, but I probably won't do that um, on this particular case. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and build that. So root pin child. And this is going to be constraint box. And then I'm going to append child things that probably don't really matter much. Um, we're going to have two overlays, one for the uh, the saturation and one for the other uh, value. So let's uh, go ahead and create those as well. And if I need to uh, have access to these, I will do so later. But this one will need to be pulled out. And I'll show you why here in a little bit. Um, because we're going to have uh, multiple things laying on top of each other. Um, basically to generate um, this thing, it's really three layers. You have one layer doing a gradient left to right, another layer going gradient bottom up, but then you have another layer underneath those, which is basically the hue layer, which if I uh, change the hue, it's the base color that we're going to have underneath us, right? So I kind of need all three of those. And I'm gonna call that one, not layout, but uh, layer, hue layer. That way we uh, differentiate between them. And most of these are probably going to uh, share um, the same style here. Um, then this one's going to be Not hue background because you have to differentiate. All right, so then styles, um, we're going to have probably need to uh, change this again to uh, HSV picker overlay. where we're going to have we're going to have a, a saturation overlay and a value overlay oops HSV value All right, so we have the hue layer and we have the, <clears throat> this is going to have two styles. First one's going to be the, uh, the normal picker overlay. And then the other one is going to be um, saturation. 
and then we'll do the value one on top of that. And these are going to be uh, fairly simple. So let's uh, go ahead and grab those, come in here, paste that. I only really need this stuff. There's probably a better way to do this. I just don't know the uh, key bindings for it. All right, so let's see the uh, value and saturations are going to be fairly simple. And this is going to be a uh, background with a uh, linear gradient um, to the right. I guess I did that a little bit different in my notes. And this is going to be from FFF 0%, RGBA, 255, 255, 255, 0, 100%. Let's just, I don't know if I need a Z index or not. Once you uh, start messing around with the Z index, that's gonna give you problems. Let's just hope that it layers these appropriately. Um, so to bottom, the value one is going to be transparent, 0% to black at 100%. And that's uh, going from transparent to black down here. This one's going to go from white to um, to this RGB. I guess I could have done transparent there. Let's just double check. So that just means that any color that we put in behind on the hue layer, this one right here. Oh, that is not, oh, it's because I did not do the uh, the common, oh, hold on. So the, uh, the common style between all of those, the pixels hide 100% with the 100%. Let's just make sure that all of these are positioned absolute. Because all of them are basically just going to be on top of each other. Um, so we need to make sure that they're all absolute positioned. And uh, that one's good. Um, we have a relative position on here, don't we? Yeah, we do. So this one, should show us all of them being on top of each other. No, that's still zero. Oh, wait. <laughs> need to remember to regenerate the CSS. I didn't do that last time, did I? <clears throat> and... Empty that cache, make sure we grab the latest CSS. And hey, there we go. Nice. All right, so let's uh, take a look at these. Um, so the uh, the background color here, let's uh, set the, uh, the background to um, green. And there we go. You can see that with those three layers, we have just the generic background. Let's uh, hide these, display none. And then this one is display none. So that we can just see these um, one at a time. So we have the, the HSV, and this is technically the hue background for the HSV picker. It's terrible naming. We can uh, change that later. It's just setting a single color. That way we're not having to um, change any gradient colors. We're just going to layer on top of this. So the saturation, this is going from um, left to right 
and that's going from white to um, transparent, essentially. I can probably just do transparent, right? Yeah, that's basically the same thing. Let's just double check by uh, removing this. And we can see that this one's going from transparent to black. So that gives us a very good comparison with this guy. So if we were to change this to green, let's find something that's similar. There we go. Close enough. Um, we can see that uh, these are basically good counterparts with each other. So we didn't have to do anything special with that. So we never have to modify two of those layers. So whenever we uh, change this hue picker, we're just going to plug that value directly into the, uh, the background color of that first layer. And then that'll uh, basically change the entire thing. Um, so if I were to do that, let me uh, grab this. So the hue, maybe that's just using lightness. Let me see, hue is 153. Okay, so let's uh, change this to hue of 156. So let's uh, come back over here, um, HSL. No, how do you do that? 256, uh, and this is going to be the Not recall how this was. <laughs> I just did that last uh, last week. Um, Fifty percent. Yeah, that looks about right. So you can see that I just uh, changed it to a single color. Obviously, we don't want it to do um, that exactly, um, but being able to uh, change this value is pretty nice. So you can see that this is roughly the the same color. Saturation 100%, lightness 50%, yeah. So yeah, worked for me. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and continue this track. Um, I think I might be done with the UI itself. So I might be able to close this, but I'm going to uh, hold on to it for now. Let's uh, just come back to the, uh, the HSV picker. And uh, now we can uh, start adding inside of the constraint box. Where is that? Here's the constraint box. Um, we can append child to here. And this is going to be our thumb. So let's go ahead and uh, create a thumb. It's basically the uh, same thing up here. Pretty simple. And let's uh, come over here, refresh. And we should be able to see the thumb inside of um, this, and we're not. Let's figure out why. Constraint. Oh, it's got a, uh, it's invisible. Why is it uh, zero size? Oh, it's because we didn't set the uh, the dragger size. We need to do that in the uh, the top. I called it a uh, thumb size, and this is probably a good time to change this. Thumb size. Only because we are using it in multiple places now. I know that there's a um, e binding for this to uh, go through and replace. I just sometimes prefer to go to these one by one just to double check. I have trust issues. All right, so there's no more references to dragger anywhere in the CSS. Let's go ahead and reminify that.
refresh once to recompile, and then we will uh, refresh plush resources to grab the la latest copy of that CSS. I'm hoping that that one worked, and it did. So here we go. We have the uh, the uh, the dragger or the thumb. I should call it a thumb, right there. Looks just like this, but obviously we need to add the uh, the drag and drop capability. So let's go ahead and come over to Hue Picker. Let's see how we did the other uh, draggable for that. And that's the other uh, nice thing about creating that reusable draggable component. Uh, because here we should be able to, after we init this uh, draggable equals new draggable thumb. I'm probably going to rewrite some of this to uh, make it more builder pattern because um, I want to remain consistent with how uh, the rest of uh, uh, Domino UI works. So set container constraint box. I'm just going to do that now. Set constrain. Yeah, let's just do these one by one. So this is going to return a draggable. Return this. Set constrain vertical. No, we don't want to do that. We need to add a drag end handler or listener. And let's make that one return a draggable. Let's do that on all of these. And this one up here too. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and create the on drag. I think this is just taking a normal event. Yeah. takes care of that and uh, come back over here so we need the uh, the cancel and the move thing um, even with the uh, on resize we will need to do um, update view Ooh, that is a lot of parents there that is way too many and we will implement that whatever that's going to be in a little bit all right, so that takes care of that. And uh, I'm hoping that because of the fact that we set the other uh, container on the other uh, draggable, um, it's going to do everything that we need. And then we don't even have to worry about it. So here we go. Yeah, look at that. Nice. Might be kind of nice to uh, change this border radius to be um, the other uh, same. Yeah, it probably does make a lot more sense if you think about it, because we're wanting the uh, the value to be inside of this area. I might eventually um, change that. Um, what if I were to do that now? Let's uh, take a look at the it's the overlay. Is that what I wanted? 
Yeah, the picker overlay. All right, so what if I did a uh, padding? Because this will change all three layers at the, at the same time. Um, gutter size. Oh, is it not padding? Margin? Yeah, I don't like the other uh, margin. Um, I mean, it's essentially what we want. Let's uh, change this layer. Probably need to uh, put a uh, default value just so that we can uh, have a non-white space here. I just don't like how that works. Maybe it does work correctly, uh, but uh, because I've already rendered it, it's stuck on that size. Um, let's try that. So a color picker constraint. Oh. Yeah, that's going to, uh, nope, not the constraint. I wanted the uh, picker overlay, this one right here. So margin, not margin top, but margin as a whole. Um, this is going to be um, gutter size. And that's basically just a gutter that's all the way around it. Maybe that'll work. We'll see. But I do like the fact that this uh, works now. Um, we might eventually change the color of this. It'd be good to have like the opposite color, maybe. the inverted that way it doesn't get lost so if you're um, going over the same color as the thumb it should inverse the other uh, color of it um, just so that it um, doesn't disappear on you seemingly yeah didn't think margin was correct you can see what i was uh, planning on doing with that But that's not how the other uh, background works, unfortunately. You would have to have something inside to uh, constrain it a little bit further. Um, for example, if I were to wrap these layers, pen child, I'm just gonna do this uh, directly. If I were to uh, set the other uh, margin to um, better size, then over here we change this one back because that didn't work anyways. This might actually work because we're still doing the uh, the constraint inside of this constraint box. It might be weird. I'll probably end up uh, changing the uh, thumb out uh, completely anyways, because I'm not really digging the other size and feel of it, and that's not working either. Maybe I needed a, a padding instead of margin. because this one is, um, no, all of those are absolute position. Yeah, that's gonna be a problem. So that, that's not, just not gonna work. So I'm just gonna remove, I'm gonna remove that. We will circle back to that later. We at least have um, something here that works uh, for the, uh, the most part. Um, we will need to, uh, Add the uh, the click handler so that we can uh, set the uh, position, and that's basically the uh, the same sort of thing that we had here. Um, this one we were adding it on the root, and I'll probably do the uh, the same sort of thing. Add click listener on. Um, what do we want to call this one? Root click. 
I don't know how to call that. All right, so let's go ahead and create that method. And this is uh, where we're going to uh, set the other uh, value. Um, just as we did with this guy, uh, whenever we uh, clicked on the other uh, track of the hue selector, um, we basically grabbed the other uh, coordinates, did all of the, uh, the translations of where that thumb is versus the, uh, the client rectangle and uh, setting the appropriate top and left values. And that'll basically be the, uh, the same sort of um, situation. And hopefully we can get that um, by the end of today's stream. All right, but otherwise that does um, allow us to uh, drag this around and it is constrained inside of that uh, constraint box, which is very handy dandy. And it works out pretty well. And again, if we were to uh, change the background here to uh, Alice Blue or whatever. Yeah, that's a terrible choice. Um, just blue, just blue. We can see that uh, because of how we layered these, um, it looks correct. All right, so we need to be able to set a value. And I don't think I actually implemented the HSV yet. Yeah, I have not. Uh, for the most part, I did get the, um, just the, uh, the private fields for it, but I haven't done any of the, uh, the math to convert from RGB to HSV to uh, HSL or any of that stuff. So haven't done that yet. I don't know if I will or not. Um, at least not on um, on screen. So we should probably have a hue. Because that's essentially what we're needing here. Um, we need to be able to call set hue and uh, give it 240, for example. If memory serves, it's been a long time. The Wikipedia page makes the math simple. Oh, does it? I haven't really uh, looked at that. And by the way, hi, Colin. It's been a while. Um, Wikipedia. Yeah, I did look up uh, some of this stuff the other day. Yeah, and I was getting basically um, this stuff. So I don't want to uh, poke around with this on screen. I'll just do the other uh, math off screen. I mean, I could always just uh, do a, uh, a search for um, JavaScript RGB to HSV. And I'm sure that there's going to be some sort of um, formula. Yeah, like here, give it a, oh, this is an HSB. This is an HSV to RGB. It does all of the other uh, math in here. That looks vaguely familiar. So, I mean, whichever way we go with that, I, I don't think I'm gonna bother with that um, yet. Um, because all we're needing to do is set the uh, the hue value. Um, I probably will need to. Uh, I could probably just use the uh, HSL for that. So in our HSV picker here, let's go ahead and do a public HSV picker. Set hue. And this is going to be a hue. So then if this dot value, and of course this is um, allowing you to modify the other uh, current value. Um, I could do new um, hue here or HSV here, giving it uh, hue and 100% on both the, uh, the value and saturation. Return this. Um, otherwise, if hue is not equal to this dot value, 
get Q. I can set value new HSV Q. Get saturation. I haven't added those getters yet. Let's go ahead and add those getters and setters. And this is assuming that we want it to be a immutable type. And return this. I don't know what we would do if. I guess in that particular case, we're not uh, doing anything. Um, if the uh, the hue is already the hue that we have selected, and like I said, this is uh, basically short circuiting and not having to uh, set the entire HSV object, um, we would be able to set the hue um, directly. All right, so that'll work. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the set value. That's going to value, which goes into value. And in here, we'll want to update the other view. Probably before we fire events, because it's possible that the uh, events will break stuff. All right, so then the update view. Let's get the, uh, the hue layer. Got style or style background color HSL now let's grab that hue I don't know what I'm doing with the uh, comma there I meant to uh, concatenate that this will be remember what I did before. Seems about right. Maybe. No, that is not right. Um, get Q is not a function. Oh, it's because I have a, um, a null value. I should probably uh, create a reasonable default. And by reasonable, just some default. This new HSV 000. Just a default. Hmm, kind of still throwing an exception. It's not a function. If this value is null, when I set that value, return this, but uh, it's not null, so it gets down here. That should be correct, right? I wonder if that... Um, where is this at? This is under Domino UI, Domino UI source main job. Yeah, this is... Should be visible. Let me just uh, double check HSV. Yeah, it's got the uh, getters and setters in here. Get hue, set hue, get saturation, set saturation, get value, set value. It's still building over here, so this probably won't even matter. Because I did a, a rebuild project. 
just in case. I do not know. I am not entirely sure why that's giving me a problem. Uh, it does look like my uh, machine is lagging again. Just need to uh, restart the code server. It's almost like it's uh, not seeing it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just completely overlooking it. This value is null, then it's returning this. If hue is not equal to this value get hue, and this is where it's failing. sure why it's failing like that but maybe a uh, code server restart probably didn't need to do that probably could have just uh, expunged the uh, GWT cache it's one of the uh, steps that I sometimes forget hopefully it's going to start sometimes it doesn't release the uh, port That's doing that. Let me just double check my notes. Oh, it's already done. Never mind. No note checking for me. to go to port 9876 maybe cleaning this will help well while that's doing that um, Let's uh, take a look at the update view again. Yeah, it's not available. Okay. So here we're uh, setting the uh, hue, which again, I probably need to, uh, I don't think these are correct numbers for the other uh, saturation and the other uh, lightness. Um, once I get, uh, the conversion stuff in here for um, RGB. I'll uh, probably do that. Do maybe uh, change the uh, thumb color. So here, um, if we're not dragging, and this is basically going back to um, what we had on the hue picker, I think we had a, a Boolean for dragging. Oh, did we not? Oh, I thought we did. Or maybe it's within the, uh, the draggable itself. Uh, 
times the uh, draggable. Yeah, I guess we do. Um, let's just add a public boolean is dragging. Make that available to us. There, sure. <laughs> So if we're not dragging, um, we basically just don't want to um, update the uh, the uh, thumb if we're dragging. Yeah, let's let's put that one on hold. All right, so then the on drag. And this is basically going to be very similar as we had on the hue picker. So we have a get value from thumb, which will uh, basically be able to return an HSV based upon the value from thumb. And that's gra grabbing the orientation of that uh, thumb component. So how do we do that? Um, so we know that the let's just double check this um, i believe the uh, saturation is going on the x-axis display none all right so we have oh i guess i didn't uh die that time i am surprised i didn't actually uh, update the color though maybe i just had that wrong Background. Color HSL 240 100. Oops, doesn't have commas. If I changed the lightness to 100, yeah, that just makes it white. So we need it at a 50%. And then if we were to make that back. All right, so the uh, saturation is going from left to right. So the saturation is the x-axis and the value is going to be the y-axis. So let's, uh, let's actually do that. probably need the contain or constraint box because the uh, thumb is inside the uh, constraint box The saturation is going to be the x times 100 divided by width divided by 100 and that is the other uh, math for that because basically it's the other uh, percentage of 0 to 100 of where it fits within that um, that region what just happened oh that's a <laughs> it's like what just happened HSV, and this is going to be get hue because the hue isn't changing. So the dragger isn't changing the hue, it's only changing the other uh, value and the saturation. So those are the, um, the two values that I want. And it's basically the brightness or the other uh, value.
And the same thing with the uh, the other uh, value side. We need to uh, look at the height this time. This is going to be the thumb Y. Oop, not thumb, but the thumb bounds at the Y location. And then the uh, value. I'm not masking the value, am I? I think I am. Yeah, I am. Um, so it's going to be one minus um, the uh, percentage because this is going to be um, a double. So it's going to be um, something between zero and one. So let's uh let's console log this. And we're going to do the saturation first. And then the uh, the brightness after that, which is the other uh, value or the uh the y axis. just have this uh, math wrong because I just uh, jotted these as notes um, without actually compiling and testing it um, oh, this probably needs to be the bounds within this uh, constraint so it needs to be relative positioning probably Yeah, I think that needs to be relative. So if I did a uh, domino dom window, muted style on the thumb. And then we did style left. But this is going to basically be unit px parse. did we get from the uh, the thumb bounds y which is basically the uh, the top Let's see what that number is. Yeah, that's much better. I 
except for that number. Because we need to uh, subtract the width. Pretty sure we need to subtract the width because this is uh needs to be the uh, the width minus the uh, the dragger because if we uh, take a look, we're going from zero to the width of this uh, stuff minus the width of the uh, the thumb. So we probably need to do that. I don't think that's going to be correct. What, uh, what is that? That's not a string. It's double. height has to be minus the thumb height. The same deal. Let's do uh, thumb height equals thumb style height is double. Let's see what that shows. I'm eventually gonna get it uh, the math correct. Broken. Last cast exception. What is this returning? Probably a null. That's probably what it is. It's uh, trying to cast a. Uh, I don't know, that's a double. Must be null though, I would assume. Um, so let's uh, let's take a look at this. So inside of here, we want to do window dot. Oh yeah, that's probably got the. Um, it's probably got the uh, the value, the px on it, the unit. Well, I can always do this, but before I do that, let's uh, just check this out. Um, computed style on zero, and then width. Yeah, it's 32 px. Yeah, so um, just do the same thing as I was doing here. Why is that not highlighting? Let's you uh, type check. Like, yeah, that makes sense. But uh, this is all internal, so it should theoretically be uh, consistent. We can always uh, refactor this later. Get it to work first and um, do our refactoring later to uh, clean things up. Yeah, that's much better. All right, coming over here, it's still at 90. Oh wait, there was a one there. Let's get to one. It does look like I can get to one. And it can get to zero for the other value side. And this will be about 50%. This is uh, 100. Wait a second. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> I'll have to double check that just to make sure because this side is going to be zero and this is the other uh, left number and if I take it about halfway it's going to be 0.5 ish 
And then over here is going to be one. Of course, uh, I wonder if these could potentially be getting outside because of the other uh, math. I might, because of the math, I might want to uh, do this saturation. Because what if it uh, gave me a value outside of zero to one? And I should probably do the other same thing, just in case there's any kind of um, sub-pixel calculations here that's a little bit inaccurate. We need to guarantee that we're within the range of zero to one. Inclusive. There we go. And I can just comment that out or remove that. Probably not the uh, the fastest way to do this. Um, there's probably, a, I think uh, some of this stuff is going to be rather expensive, um, but I don't know. I do need to uh, fix the, uh, the value though, or the hue, because that doesn't seem to be setting properly. Um, cool, so <laughs> it is printing the, uh, the two string of that. Um, obviously that's not very convenient here. Um, let's go ahead and create a, a two string on the uh, HSV. I'll just uh, use a, a generator for it. That's fine. Don't need anything fancy. I just want to uh, see what the other uh, values are. That does not seem right. That is not right. Where? What? <clears throat> oh. Apparently I was uh, dividing in here. Um, guess I don't need to do that. I think I was allowing it. Uh, my original thought was I was going to allow zero to 100, and then I was going to uh, convert it into the uh, percentage internally, but this will work a little bit cleaner. I could still change that, I don't know. It's got the hue is uh, 240, but my uh, background is not actually getting updated. class. I was like, where's my code? Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. So here's my uh, background color. So my hue layer, my hue layer is in there. Um, HSL. Let's, uh, let's look at that again. So this is my hue layer. I believe which is the HSV background. Yeah. So background color, HSL, 240. I'm doing 100% and then 50. 50%. Yeah, okay. I guess that's the only thing that I was missing there. Yeah, there we go. 
Cool, cool, cool. All right. That's pretty nice. So we got that. We have this. And then we should be able to uh, combine the two into a single color picker, which will be really nice. Yeah, that works out really well. And uh, because I guess that's because it's updating this um, constantly with uh, basically logging and uh, doing the uh, two string. Um, it's a little laggy on the other stream. But it's not that way whenever it's uh, not logging. Whenever I closed out OBS yesterday or last time I streamed, um, this didn't have any kind of issues. Just need a uh, hardware update probably. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So uh, let's figure out what we need to do now. Um, I am just double checking my notes. There's a bunch of stuff that I haven't done yet. Um, I could probably do some of this other stuff later. Oh, see, and that's the other thing. Um, if we were to uh, set the other uh, value from external, obviously that's not getting set. Um, because the, uh, the HSV right now should be zero, zero, zero. So it should be up there, but then, uh, we, uh, changed the hue to 240. So then the value of this color picker should be 240, zero, zero, which zero, zero should be down here. So I need to update this. But obviously we don't want to, because of the fact that we're calling update view um, while we're dragging, we do not want to uh, change the location of the other uh, thumb if we're dragging. So that's why I was uh, doing this. So if it's not dragging, then we basically need to uh, figure out um, where within the other uh, view should we place the thumb based upon the other uh, value. All right, so then basically doing this kind of stuff. I don't think that's the constraint box. I think I need to do it on the other route. Because this constraint box is basically just adding the, uh, the padding. But we're doing everything within the other uh, root window, right? May have to change that. I don't know. Um, constraint bounds. Yeah, let's just do the constraint for now. Oops. All right. So then. Um, we need to calculate the X and that's going to basically be a hundred times the uh, value saturation times width, whatever that is, <clears throat> divided by 100. And that is going to be, do I need the width for anything else? Uh, it doesn't look like it. So I should be able to do, yeah. Let me just do width here. I guess that's going to get confusing. And this is, so this is uh, inversing it, which is probably what I would need to do with the, uh, the hue picker. 
because otherwise the other uh, value would be going the uh, the opposite direction. So going one minus that value um, helps us invert it. So then we need to grab the thumb and set its location. Yeah, so set left. We're going to have the X. Oh wait, this has to be. Um, This will have to be, you know, this is correct. This is all relative to the, uh, the parent container. Um, maybe, let's see what that does. So it should start out with um, it being in the bottom left hand corner. Ooh, that did not work. Where is it? Top zero or top one ninety eight. Oh, I forgot to do the uh, the minus stuff. Yeah, I guess we need to do this too. Just those two. Minus thumb width. Minus thumb height. Obviously, most of these state things can be uh, cached. We don't have to calculate this every single time. <clears throat> no! String index out of bounds. Now it's because it's not a, uh, a value yet. Hmm. If it's attached, do that. Otherwise, zero. Or, hmm, I don't know. Because I think that's the other problem is that we're uh, calling this before <clears throat> this is actually attached. So then grabbing a computed style is not going to work, right? Let's just uh, check that. Bear foo equals document create element. So there's the outer HTML, and if I do a get computed style on foo, and then left, that's going to be an empty string. The uh, get bounding client rect does have values. Of course, it's going to be all zeros, but at least it's not going to be, um, it's not going to be broken. Yep, let me just do that. And hopefully that'll uh, stop that exception from occurring. Yeah. All right. So now it's on the uh, the bottom left hand corner, and uh, only because um, in the other uh, constructor we also added a little blurb now or when attached. It's going to call update view. So as soon as it attaches, 
um, it's going to uh, call update view and that will actually get the uh, the actual size of this uh, thumb. So I would like to see rather than set hue here, what if I did a value new HSV um, and let's do 20 and saturation is going to be 0 0.8 and value 0 0.3. So this will make the hue 20, which will be somewhat over here, kind of a magenta like color. We got to change this to HSL so we can see this a little bit. You're new. I guess uh, 20 would be more on this side. Is that right? I think I'm... This is inverted. Yeah. It's got the, uh, the yellow over here, and I have it on the left. So, um... So 20... Can't really get it very well, but uh, 20 would be this kind of brownish color. And then for the saturation being 8.8, 8, it'll probably be right about here. And then value 0.3 be like a, right up here ish. So let's uh, go ahead and refresh and see if it actually puts the uh, the thumb in the uh, the correct spot. Is that right? Value is 0.3. Oh, I guess I got had that in the opposite direction. It's one up here and zero down here. So 0.3 is right there. So it, it was correct. Let me refresh that again. That looks correct to me. So that is basically our HSV picker. Um, still have a, a few things that we can do, such as uh, clicking on the other uh, background, which I uh, created the other uh, snippet for. I just didn't uh, implement it. Where is that? What did I call that on root clicked? <clears throat> Um, yeah, event get client get um, event. This is a uh, mouse event, so I can do mouse event. BBT equals mouse event. Let's cast it. Since this is a, a private method, we do know that this is a, a mouse event because that's the only one that we're using this method for. So we can get the other uh, client X, but we kind of need this to be relative. So we're going to have to do some uh, translations in here. Y equals EVT client Y, but we also need the root bounding rect. If we take the client X and subtract the X on the other uh, bounds, it's going to give us the relative X inside of here. So then the uh, same thing here for the other uh, Y. So these are relative. And we can uh, grab the other uh, center. So what if we were to do um, the thumb Let's be consistent bounds. 
So if we did Assuming the uh, the thumb is always circular um, or rectangular, uh, or not rectangular, but uh, square, like perfect size, we're basically wanting to grab the uh, the center of the uh, the thumb. set the thumb set left and this is going to be x minus drag center or thumb center let's go ahead and that um, set top basically going to be the same thing. We have Y minus the center plus PX. So that's going to uh, set the uh, thumb location. And basically, I just want it so that whenever I click, it'll go inside of um, the center of the other uh, thumb. Of course, I probably need to put this within the other uh, correct bounds. Yeah, that, that should be correct because I'm already doing the uh, the client minus the bounds. Might be okay. Set value. Let's just make sure that it fires the uh, events. <clears throat> Maybe it. I don't know if I like it being on the up event, the mouse up, but I mean that does work and it does stay within the uh, the bounds, which is very nice. I mean, that's pretty slick, right? Um, I would like to uh, delegate it to the uh, the dragger, though, right? Because I don't really like that I can't just start dragging from that clickable spot. So how would we do that? Because we want to delegate. Um, so obviously it's not on root, um, on root clicked. This is going to be um, delegate mouse down. Instead of this, we need to add event listener, event type, mouse down. Let's just do that first. Let's just make sure that uh, it'll uh, actually move the, uh, the thumb on the mouse down yeah down up down up so it's actually changing the value on the mouse down but now i do want it to uh continue the drag and drop so how do i do that i don't know dragger or draggable Or actually, how do I do that? Um, basically, I want to delegate that uh, mouse down event to the thumb and its listeners, which so happen to be the draggable. Um, How do I 
fire an event on a, an element. Dispatch event, right? Can't I do that? to execute dispatch event. The event is already being dispatched. Oh. I just want to uh, delegate it. So maybe it's not dispatch. Because um, whenever we're in here, if I'm clicking on this, that mouse down is not going to reach the background. So it's never going to call that um, method. But if I'm clicking over here, I'm moving the draggable, which is the, uh, the thumb in this particular case, but then I want to attach it to the draggable on mouse down. So I want to refire that same event onto the, uh, the thumb. And see, it's dispatch event. Ugh. And since it's already being dispatched, I just want to dispatch a new one. So what is it saying? Event is already being dispatched. Let's just uh, throw it inside of a uh, debug. Just inspect this uh, event a little bit. It did not go into the debugger. Did I do it in the wrong spot? Apparently, uh, that's not going to work for some reason. Quit debugger. All right, so here's the event. So it is a mouse event. It is trusted. Uh, current target. That's fine. Event phase. That could be the uh, issue. Yeah, so it might uh, require me to create a brand new one. 
Ugh. That's fine. Um, what parts am I using? It's like just the other uh, client X and Y, right? I don't think I'm using much else. Um, and it's only for the uh, the mouse down. So let's like, go ahead and do that. Event I create, or no, it's a uh, DOM global create event. Nope. Document. So DOM global document create event. Where the crap is that? Um, domino dom document create event no event how you uh how do you create an event document doesn't have yeah didn't, didn't think so like how do you do creating new events um, can you this is so new Mouse event. What is it? I don't know. I was just looking at uh, somebody else's code. <laughs> it might be. <clears throat> Open URL. Oops, wrong browser window. That makes it a little bit easier. Um, so then, mouse event in it. So let's see, init dot lion x is going to be evt client x. I'm just going to do these directly. Yeah, you know, let's just see if that's enough. Now, where's my browser? I don't know if I need much more than that. Oh, I need to get rid of the uh, GWT debugger out of here, don't I? It looks like I already did. Yep, there we go. That worked. That's enough to at least um, trigger it to uh, get that started. So I should probably do this um, on the hue picker as well because I would like to be able to click but hold down the other uh, mouse button and then drag to a value yeah I do not like the uh, the mouse click because it waits until you're on the up before it actually does anything uh, so yeah I'd like to do that um, because just clicking in here and delegating directly to the other uh, thumb magic that's nice that is the way it should be that is pretty slick right there. 
All right. And uh, that seems to be working, at least for the saturation and the value. Sweet. So let's uh, let's do the same thing on the hue picker. So over here, I know that my face is probably gonna get in the way, but uh, where did I do that? On track clicked. So here I want to change this to delegate mouse down. And instead of click, it's going to be event listener, event type, um, mouse down. Let's take a look at this. We have the mouse event there. Dun, 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 dun. Wonder if I should uh, set the value before or after. I don't know. Let's uh, go ahead and delegate this as well. Same thing. Import class. See if that worked. So it should be able to at least um, delegate to the uh, drag. Over here, I click and drag, let go. Nice. That works for me. That makes it uh, very, very clean. I like it a lot. So um, I don't really think that there's uh, much more to do with the uh, HSV picker. Um, as we saw, we were able to uh, set the value and it was able to um, put the thumb into the correct spot within that picker space. Um, it's not firing the initial, which is fine because it's just for uh, display purposes. I can, uh, I can uh, cheat that in. But this does seem to go cleanly from 0 to 1. And same with the other value from 0 to 1. Well, didn't exactly get up to 1. Uh, we might have to do the other uh, same sort of thing. It's a little expensive to do that where... And it's it's not reaching exactly one because of the fact that, well, I might be able to do this. Hold on. Um, so get a value from thumb. We already uh, calculated most of this stuff. If, let me console Y value. I'm assuming if the, uh, if Y is zero, because this is a uh, relative Y, if Y is zero, you should just set the uh, value to one. It's not exactly zero. How is it getting that? Probably because of the uh, sub pixel stuff. Constraint bounds height minus thumb height. What is my thumb height? Thirty two. And my constraint bounds is one hundred and ninety eight. Why? 
That doesn't compute. Well, let's uh, let's put a breakpoint in there. So let's update view. I wanted to get the uh, the value from thumb. So let's uh, throw in a breakpoint there, and let's oh, ha! <laughs> well, that's not good. Um, Assuming that Oh, see how it shifts down? I don't know if uh the frame rate on uh, my stream is gonna be fast enough. Oh yeah, right there. It's not until I move. If I just do a thumb or if I just uh mouse down it's uh, outside of the bounds. Can't have that. Need to have the other uh, Y value um, constrained. And that is going to be in the uh, delegate mouse down. Same with the uh, the X here. Let's just grab the uh, the max of those two. Just double check. Yeah, and it needs to be constrained on that side as well. Ugh. So map min bounds dot height. Oh, this is uh. Min bounds height and that stuff. Oh wait, <laughs> can't be the height. It needs to be the height minus <sighs> the thumb. So let's, uh, let's switch these back, make these into uh, two different. So then X is equal to math.min bounds, oops, width minus thumb bounds width versus I think that'll uh, keep it in there. Let's uh, double check. down. Ooh, nope. I get that wrong. It's not going to the uh, correct side. Um, there's a root. Problem is that I'm trying to set it to a center. That's that's the uh, the issue. Um, so it's not until I'm setting the other uh, left. So I need to I need to revert a lot of this stuff. I 
that's what it was before. All right, so this is for the other left. It's going to be math.min min of um, let's do max first max of zero and this and then left is equal to math.min bounds width minus thumb bounds width versus left. And then top is going to be equal to the min of bounds height minus like that. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that's correct. So now whenever I click up here, That looks correct. Whenever I click down here, it, uh, it strains it. Yeah. Okay. So that was um, that was my problem there. Just needed to make sure that that was correct. Um, this guy should be the same. So if I were to click out here, it's looks like it's working correctly. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right, cool. So I don't need that anymore. Let me uh, remove that and we should be good. So that means that <clears throat> we are getting the value from zero to one and zero to one on saturation. Okay, so whew, that uh, fixes that issue. I was afraid that it wasn't getting us the uh, the value at the very top. It was getting really close, but not entirely there. All right. <clears throat> so that might actually do it for this, right? So now it's a matter of uh, combining these two. And I'm probably going to do that in a different stream for the most part. Um, I can uh, give a sneak peek of what that's going to look like. Uh, so before we do that, let's go ahead and uh, commit all of these changes. Added implementation or HSV picker. All right, so um, we're not going to go completely into this, but uh, we will want to do a, a color picker um, demo. This is going to be a little bit different than the, you know, the finalized color picker because we're actually going to create a uh, component for this. All right, so for that, we're going to need both an HSV picker and a color picker. So let's uh, go ahead and create a, a flex layout. Um, a pen child, and this is going to be an HSV picker at the other top. And then a pen a child um, Q picker. And let's set the other uh, width of this. To uh, 400 pixels, maybe. Okay. 
obviously we're going to have to uh, pull these out um, because we're going to need the uh, references to the, both of these. Oh, I think I did this in the wrong direction. All right, so let's um, let's put this at the uh, top so we can see it quicker. And then for this uh, flex layout, we want to set the uh, direction top bottom. All right, and then HSV, HSV equals new HSV, and we're going to do um, 240, saturation 80%, and this is going to be 30%. So that's basically going to be my uh, value here. So um, HSV picker, let's uh, go ahead and pull this one out. Let's do the same thing with the hue picker. So we have both of those. All right, so what we want to be able to do, we want to uh, be able to correlate both of these uh, components together because we're going to create a component on the outside um, so what we want is set the other value here to HSV. We want to set the other value here to HSV dot get hue. Oh, not set value. It's just value. It's like, what? All right, cool. And then we need to uh, have, we're going to have to uh, create some event handlers. And I'm going to do these down here. That way we actually create both of these because we're kind of going to have um, cyclic dependencies between these two components. So let's say on the, uh, the hue picker, let's do this one first. So let's uh, add a change handler. Hue is equal to that. All right. So if we have this hue, I mean, technically we don't need this anymore uh, because it's not a live value. We're going to have to uh, set all of these um, manually. So here we want to do the HSV picker dot set hue to that value. <laughs> and I guess that's it. So that one was pretty simple. So let's uh, test that out. Let's just make sure that it actually sets the uh, hue appropriately. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. So that is setting the hue appropriately. And I can uh, click over here, click here, click on the yellow. It's able to set the hue just right. Cool. And obviously this one doesn't really matter. Um, that was weird. The uh, event was kind of bizarre on that one. Um, we will need to uh, be able to grab like the overall um, value from this. Um, but we're going to do that in a, a different stream. It is lunchtime right now. And let me uh, check the uptime of our stream. We've been going about two and a half hours ish and uh, we did complete the HSV picker uh, for the most part. Like I said, um, there might be some things here and there that we want to uh, modify, but overall this seems to be working out pretty well. Um, if I were to change the, uh, the width of that. Oh, that's something that we didn't do. I know that we did it on this one. So if we were to, I don't know why that's connected. Uh, let's go ahead and inspect this. Did I not? Oh, I am not checking for left versus right click. I should probably verify in the delegate. Oh, wrong class. 
delegate mouse down. Um, I know that we did that on the draggable itself. That's right here. Domino is there uh, is enabled. No, oh, that is disabled. If disabled, or the event button is not zero, then return. And I'll need to do the uh, the same thing over here to the hue picker. Delegate mouse down. There we go. That way we don't get like middle clicks or right clicks. Um, we explicitly want the uh, the left click. So right click, it's not doing anything. Left click, however, is, and uh, same with this guy, right click doesn't do anything, cool. All right, so let me uh, just double check. Um, if I were to put the hue here, and I were to change the width of this, yeah, see how the, uh, the thumb stays in a uh, relative position. However, this guy, if I were to set this one and change the other width. Oh. Didn't we just check that and it didn't work? Was it height? Is height not even working? Why isn't the height working? Oh, there we go. I don't, what in the world happened there? I don't know. I swear we uh, tested this just a second ago and it wasn't working. All right, well, that does work. Um, so we don't need to worry about that. The other uh, width seems to be keeping it within the other uh, bounds. Okay, so that works for me. Um, whenever we uh, come back on the, uh, the next stream, we're going to uh, dive a little bit further into these. Um, I will probably work tomorrow um, on getting the uh, some of the math in here for um, conversions. Um, as we saw earlier in the stream, there are some functions here for converting from um, HSV to RGB and vice versa. Um, we'll probably want to uh, get some of that um, available to us uh, for some of the other uh, next stuff because we would probably want to have, let me uh, scroll back up to the other uh, body or the other uh, color picker itself. We might want to have some sort of controls in here. So if we had like an RGB um, we would want to have the uh, text boxes for the RGB and the alpha. I could probably easily add the alpha. I might uh, play around with that, but uh, we would like to be able to do these uh, conversions. All of this stuff stays the same. And I would like to see if I can uh, do this dropper control where it goes outside of the other uh, browser. And I only say that because um, inside of Google Docs. Let me open this off stream since it's my uh, business. Google Docs. Drag this one onto the other screen. And for its color picker, even though we're inside of a, a browser, if I do a custom, is that 
How did we do that before? I swore we had a color picker that was able to uh, go outside of the browser. I might be just dreaming things. Hmm, I must be dreaming it. I swear there was a uh, color picker that did that. Well, let me uh, see if there is one. Maybe I, maybe I was looking at this one um, because this one makes sense because it's not actually within the HTML space um, for this one to actually go outside of the uh, the browser window. But uh, it would be nice if we had some sort of ability to do that. Probably not because of security involved. Because I mean, if I had the ability to uh, scan over stuff outside of the other uh, browser security wise that's pretty bad because then it would allow um, anybody to uh, view content on your desktop so I think I just had it in a dream or something but uh, so that's gonna do it for today I really hope that you enjoyed today's stream um, we're going to be continuing the uh, the color picker uh, development um, in a uh, future stream and uh, we'll That was weird. It changed the, uh, I'm getting really sidetracked today. Probably best for me to uh, end the stream. Um, keep finding these little rabbit holes to go down. Um, so yeah, that was kind of weird. Uh, maybe because of the uh, the resizing that I did earlier. But uh, just go ahead and uh, stick with us. Um, if you uh, want to hit the, uh, the follow button, uh, subscribe to uh, Twitch. Um, yeah, super dangerous to let the uh, page. Yeah, I must have had it in a dream or something. Or I was uh, looking at this one. Or wait, no, 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 no. I remember. Um, color picker. I think I used somebody else's, right? No, I think it was a dream. <laughs> That just bothers me. <laughs> I'm getting old. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll readdress that later. So um, stick around, and uh, we'll see you then. Thanks.